Hello friends and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for Expeditions Viking. This is a RPG game, sort of, with uh, tactical fighting. Um, it's mostly a story-based RPG, like, uh, I don't know, pretty much any RPG. Uh, uh, gosh, I play them, but I can never remember the names of what they're called. There was that one that was so popular just a year or two ago. Uh, sh shit, I don't remember what it was. But anyways, it's like a, you know, the, the basic idea is like any RPG. This one's got a really good setting, and uh, these guys, uh, a few years ago, they made a game called Expeditions uh, Conquistadors that was really fun. And uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, uh... A lot of unique elements to this series. You know, if you want to hear what a lot of those different elements are, I did a review of this game, uh, and it's already been posted, so go check out that review. I kind of explain what makes this series unique. Uh, it's really fun, and uh, I hope you guys will like this series. So let's uh, we're going to start up a new game here. Of course, the first thing you do in any new game is you uh, design, your, uh, uh, design your character. And I do like that it sets the default to be a female. That's... Uh, uh, just really like you don't see many games that do that a lot of them offer you male and female characters but not many actually set a default to be a female uh, but since I'm a guy I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, make it a guy uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time making our uh, character look um, you know I'm not gonna make him look exactly like me or anything but I'll fiddle around a little bit with him to get the uh, kind of hair and, and uh, uh, so forth uh, that uh, that looks good That'll do. Um, and uh, my name, of course, is Sean, and my dad's name is uh, Douglas. It's actually Doug, but Douglas will uh, look better when it comes into the uh, uh, comes into the game. Um, <clears throat> my eyes are blue, and my hair is brown. There we go. More. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and uh, what colors did I have? Yeah, actually, let's go blue and yellow like that. There we go. That looks good. Um, great. Uh, and uh, there we go. I think I'm not that blonde. Yeah, we'll go with that one. All right. So there is uh, the appearance of our character. Next up, primary stats. Now, um, strength, you know, I mean, the strength, endurance... Finesse. Finesse is like dexterity. Perception, I guess, is like intelligence. And then sense would be like wisdom. So it's the standard... Um, uh, yeah. Standard uh, abilities that apply to different things. Really... I'd kind of like to have an archer... But I also need somebody who can fight with a sword. So if I... Perception is for uh, ranged weapons. Um, and I want him to be able to have... Uh, this finesse do? Knives and spears. Yeah, and then endurance course is your strength. Well, it seems really general when I do something like that. But I think I'm going to... Uh, sure it would be nice to have him be superior in some way. I'm actually going to make him superior in strength. I really do want to have a good archer, though. Because uh, when I haven't played it too far in there, but it, for a while you only really have one good archer, and it's nice to have a couple... So we'll do that. Um, I'm going to have him be good with a sword. So you get 50 skill points, and there's so many different skills. And then each of the different skills have multiple layers as well. So uh, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to specialize. But I'm going to have him uh, start out with a sword. Um, so we'll give him one level of sword. Uh, we'll give him a level of bow. And um, I guess a, a shield, because he's going to use a sword and a shield. So that's already like half of his, his uh, points there. Um, I don't 
think I really need to have any of these to start with. I do want to have him have like a um, uh, leadership skill would be nice, but I think I'm going to have him get the um, influence. Maybe that's under this one, utility. Ah, diplomacy. So diplomacy opens up a lot of good dialogue options, and since this is our main character, we definitely want him to have um, some of the diplomacy and... Guess that's it for now. Um, and uh, as far as these skills are concerned, fast healer is good because, or good patient, because that will get you additional. You'll you'll heal up better when when somebody heals you in battle. Um, fencer, flanking damage. Yeah, maybe later on. And of course, all of these uh, options remain open as the game goes on. It uh, looks like they've changed a little bit because there seems to be more than there was the last time I was uh, looking at this. But I don't think I really need any of these from the very start. Sharpshooter is good. Oh, and uh, it's only cost three. We'll go ahead and upgrade that one as well because I do want this guy to be a good ranger. So I've still got 20 points left. I'm going to go ahead and get another point of diplomacy. <clears throat> I want to have uh, points for guarding as well. Um, that way he can guard while we're camping. And that's pretty much going to be his primary task in there. Um, so maybe I should grab a leadership skill. Or how about I could probably upgrade. Uh, that takes 9 points. That takes 12 points. Shield takes 9 points. And I can always sit on these too. They're, they're, I'd be able to use them later on if I don't use them now. So I don't have to use them all. Charge takes 9. Hmm. Now what does the first level of leadership do? It gives you maneuvering. Yeah, I don't really use that. It does unlock special conversation options. So I wouldn't mind having more conversation options since he's going to be doing most of the conversing. So you know what? We'll go ahead and go with one level of leadership. All right. We've got two points left over. Um, so I'd say we're good to go. Uh, yep. I do want to continue. Yes. All right. So here's the opening screen now. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do up front is basically like quick tutorials and there's going to be a lot of storytelling. Um, so I hope you are... Your father was a great warrior and a good husband, but he was not a strong chieftain to his clan. As he travels to join his brothers in the halls of Valhalla, you must take his place. I thought she was speaking like Danish. That's why I was narrating. And then I realized she was speaking English, and I was like, "All right, I'll let her. Uh, I'll let her do the narration." Oh, 2016. Um, what did we just get to like watch the trailer? Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> it's also 2017, by the way. Uh, Logic artists. Uh, this is a, a slightly pre-release version, so it's always possible that something will change before tomorrow or Thursday when it's released. Aid me, Odin, in my effort to find the struggles of a bygone time as glimmering light on glass. All right, is the evening after your father's funeral? When you close your eyes, the image of his blazing ship shimmers in the dark behind your eyelids. It's not a common ritual this far south, but your mother, Astrider, Ast Astrider, who hails from the lands of the Geats, insisted on it. Oh my gosh, you guys, be ready for me to mispronounce all this stuff. I hope all my European friends are ready to just cringe. 
All the thanes of the neighboring clans have come to attend your feast in his honor. Your father may not have been the most successful thane, but as a warrior he commanded the respect of many. The guests are filling into your father's, your longhouse. The thanes enter first, each trailing a modest group of warriors. Your mother leans in to whisper a few words of advice before she takes her seat. You should greet each of the thanes before the feast begins, but listen well to their words. Few of them would benefit from making this a smooth transition. It will be important to know where they stand. All right, so we've got a new quest, The Feast. Uh, characters with the golden name plates have dialogues for you. Click on them to talk. The icon over your chair is a quest marker. You can turn these off. Talking to other things is not mandatory. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, so I need to go through and I need to talk to all the different people. So there's me, Sean Douglason. And uh, let's uh, let's actually start with these guys because I think they have good information for us. Your elder brother Rurik always has a penchant for music. He looks up, gives you a warm smile as you approach him. Gotvild brother, I mean my honored thane, how do you feel? Uh, I'm well, I'm fine. I don't know, it's quite sunk in. I can't believe what a mess the old man left me. Uh, I think I'm going to play a nice guy in this. I because, I mean, that's just what I always do. Just played my natural way. I'm well. I know our father is in Ball Hall now. Rurik smiles. You can barely hear a soft voice over the din of the feast. I'm certain he is. Odin would have to be a fool not to accept a warrior like him. I don't think he's actually Batman. Uh, how's everybody been treating you? If anybody disrespects you. All right, so it's how's everybody been treating you? Everyone knows you are the better warrior and a stronger-willed man than I. Nobody wants me as their thane. To tell you the truth, I think our clansmen are almost as relieved as I am that you took on the mantle. I have to go and be a good host. I'll talk to you later. Just use the old signal, the old bat signal, and if you need help to get out of a conversation with one of the other thanes. All right, Batman. Let's see what Kettle has to say here. Uh, Kettle is standing off to the side holding a horn full of mead. The young hunter appears to be watching the feast with a faintly amused expression, and he nods respectfully when you come near. Busy entertaining your guests? Not too busy to check in on you, Kettle. I've had an uneasy feeling all night. Have you seen school's house curls over there in the corner? Oh boy. Hodrega, Hodregerda, and Skaki, I've heard stories about them. Uh, Nefja seems to be expecting trouble too, so I've decided to go easy on the meat and keep an eye out. Well, I don't remember who any of those people are. I've already forgotten who they are. Never hurts to be careful. Speaking of which, keep an eye on the big lug back there. He and his friends have been putting their heads together all night. I think he might be planning something. Aslifer is family. He wouldn't attack me. Sure, he wouldn't do anything underhanded, but it's basically tradition for your families to fight over who gets to sit in the big chair. But this is your feast. I'll watch Aslifer... A slafer? And his friends, you should relax and enjoy yourself. All right, well, let's go check up on this Aslafer guy who wants to fight me, apparently. Aslafer is a distant cousin. Leadership of the clan has moved between your side of the family and his for generations. He's known as a skilled warrior and a hard worker. He sits oh, with his no closest friends. Thank you. I hope there's no bad blood between us. Yeah, that's good. It's no secret I didn't agree with how Douglas ruled our clan. Uh, bearing this in mind, I don't see what gives you the right to succeed him. Oh, well, la di da mister. But this feast is in his honor, and I will not insult his memory here. Well, it's a little late for that. Nor will I challenge your claim to be leadership. Wait a minute, you just did challenge my claim to leadership. Um, uh, you believe you'd be more suited to lead us? I do. Um, because my father failed you? It's not our way to let rulership simply pass from father to son. If we were to become a strong clan again, we must appoint the best warriors. Then you're not the strongest of us merely. Least weak of your father's children. Well, there's faint damning with faint praise. If you believe the gods favor you, I hope you will not I hope you'll get the chance to prove it, but I will not simply wait for your father to bring the whole clan to ruin. Oh, for you to falter and bring the whole clan to ruin. Well a little uh not uh, not very supportive there, Aslifer. How about uh, Rag Rag and Hilder? What does she have to say? Rag and Hilder is the most influential of your guests, the vassal of King Hringer. She is the current ruler of Denmark. Oh, so Denmark must be a part of a larger kingdom. She has come from the trade hub of Reeb to the south, where she presides as Jarl. She nods politely as you approach her seat. It's a beautiful ceremony, Sean. I extend my condolences for your loss on behalf of the Reeve and the King. 
I must tell you, I advised him not to seek out the isles across the sea. We've all heard the stories of the unprotected coast and their treasures, but there's more danger than rumors let on. I'm not surprised they claimed his life, but I'm glad at least he died with a sword in his hand. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Did you know? No, of course your father's sword will be missed. Did you know Douglas well? I knew him as a warrior. We forgot together, fought together. He's a shrewd tactician. When he needs you, I hope you'll serve him well. I will serve. You have my word. Glad to hear it. Our king will not forget those that ate him in battle. All right, I gotta go check on the other people. The old shield maiden smiles, gracefully slides back down in her seat where she eats some chicken. Feast updated. Hmm. So that must be that I got one out of three from talking to these uh, thanes. Let's go see what Half Halfdowner Half Downer has to say. Half Downer is the thane of a slightly larger clan that borders your lands to the east. He wears a solemn expression, nods heavily when you approach him. Douglas is in Valhall now. Sean, there's no doubt about it. He died doing what he loved, and that's what, sailing? Uh, but while he feasts among the heroes, you're left back here to sort out the pieces. You've got your work cut out for you. What do you mean? Your father managed to make quite a few enemies in his time, most of them among his own clan. For me to be honest, he never paid one speck of attention. The wishes of his people, surely you're not expecting your claim to leadership to go uncontested. No one in this clan is more suited to lead than I am, I'm confident. Well, shit, let's hope you're right. At least it's plain for all to see you throw a bloody fine feast. This doesn't look like much of a feast. There's only like 12 people here. Halfen... Halfdunner empties his mug of mead in a single gulp and slams the mug and calls for a refill. And finally, Skewl, Skull Cleaver. Skewl, what do you have to say? He's the Thane of Yelling, which borders your area. Yelling is a large territory, and Skewl is one of the most powerful Thanes in Jutland. Jutland? Yelling has prospered under his rule. Skewl pushes himself away from the table with his foot, the chair making a grinding sound across the wooden floor. Sean, my boy, sorry about your father. If there's anything we can do to aid you in these trying times, don't hesitate to ask. Well, that's very kind of you, Thane Skewl. Of course, we must all stand together against the Frankish threat. I'll be frank. Tell me, what are your plans for this place? How will you lead your clan? I... I don't know what a folk moot is. Um, I'm going to start by expanding our defenses. You really are Douglas' son, aren't you? Just take care not to lose touch your people's needs and the eagerness to defend them. I'm sure you know I fought with your father. We were very much of a similar inclination. He had real taste for battle. Mark my words. True bonds are forged in battle, not bound in blood. He came to me for advice before he mounted on his last journey. On account of my ties to Kaopeng, I should have warned him better about what he was getting himself into. Uh, what does Kaopeng have to do with it? Vikings have been to the Isles across the sea. I've heard many stories about it. Father, wait, since I often go there to trade. Oh, he goes to Kaopeng to trade. I thought he meant the Isles across the sea. Father wanted to hear if the stories were true. But I've taken too much of your time already. I'm asking you questions. You haven't taken too much of my time. Perhaps we'll talk later. School nods to himself, turns attention. To, oh, he's giving me the high hat. All right, well, it sounds like that's all of them. Let's see what Nefja, that's my mom, right? Oh, this must be the most pathetic mead hall in Jutland. Hey, Skaki. At least have the sense to whisper. Thank you, Hrodera. I've heard Douglas had neglected his clan for years. It's just sad. Maybe his son will do a better job. I doubt you. he'll live long enough to give the chance. Hey, can I come over and punch you? Is that an option? Asshole. All right, let's see what my mom has to say. There you are. The feast seems to be off to a good start. Oh, that's not my mom. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I guess my mom is Srida or something, right? That's right. Nefja is one of my oldest friends. Your family's always been close, grew up together in a village. She's poured mom a mug of mead. Nice to see you out of your armor for once. You've seen my sister in this dress before. Surely it's the same thing. She was so excited to see me like this. I'll never hear the end of it. Uh, where is a Fira? My poor sister is fever. She's such a frail constitution. All this wet and cold. Well, you live in Norway. It's going to be wet and cold. This, d d d d oh, shit. I don't even know. It's Norway and... D I don't even know. I should not say any of those things. What do you think of our guests? Your fellow Thanes are certainly a proud and graceful bunch, even as they plot to murder you. Um, certainly the sense I'm getting. I'm not sure all of them are actively planning to kill us. I have a weird feeling about Skewl, though. They call him Skull Cleaver for a reason. Hulf... Hulf Danner plays the lovable grump, but he's had his eye on our harbor for years. R Ranghilder, I'm not sure about. She probably has nothing to gain from destroying us. That's Ranghilder, right? 
She's little more than a uh, ringer's appendage. Who knows where he stands? Let's talk later. I have to be a good host. Well, I'm going to be a good host by like just taking my chair. Following the initial meet and greet, everybody toasts your father and digs into the meal. Food covers every inch of the table, and mead seems to flow endlessly. And uh, Duder is heading outside. You're listening to the usual complaints. When Kettle slips discreetly out the longhouse, some pottery crashes against the ground, and men begin to shout. Short order, the door flies open, and it's Artar, <clears throat> Artar Erlingsen, sword in hand. Outside, you see his brother standing over the kettle. Otter looks around. What a splendid feast for such a shit thing. Sean, your family had its chance to earn our respect, and you wasted it. Uh, how? I just, I, I just became Thane, like today. Come outside, defend your honor. We'll burn this hall to the ground. Otter, you miserable drunkard. How dare you attack our Thane's honor during his own feast? You'll pay for this. You have to handle this. Well, thanks, Mom. If the other Thanes think you're too weak to deal... Would you think I was not going to uh, go out there? Yes, I'll have Nefja help me out. By the gods, he's going to make us kill him this time, isn't he? Alright, so retrieve your weapons from the rack by the door. Nefja is now following me. Let's go grab those weapons. Great. I have a sword, a bow, and a shield. Take all. And I need to put them in my inventory. So I will uh, put the bow, and then there's my sword and shield. And I have mead. I'm going to save this, though, because I know that there's a, a more challenging fight coming up. And uh, she is set up with her spear, although I guess I can't uh, fiddle with any of her stuff yet because she's not part of my herd yet. She's just following me. All right, so I am all set. Close that down. Confront them outside. Let's go get into our first battle. Exciting. Anytime now. One, uh, one complaint I do have about this. These loading screens sometimes take a little time. Most of the guests follow you outside and form a half circle behind you. You're dimly aware of the other Thanes muttering amongst themselves. Nefja runs over to Kettle and helps him back on his feet. Blood runs down his face. Four against one. That's what the sons of Erlinger Thor Thorgelsen consider a fair fight. Shut your mouth, woman. He started it. Alright, uh, see, here's where diplomacy comes in handy. Go home, you fools. I know our family's never been on good terms. We spill each other's blood. The killing will never stop. Will you be alright? You snakes, you crave a fight so much. Alright, so probably always a good idea to take the the uh, bonus uh, comment section. So I'm going to take that. He's right, Atar. This is not what father would want. Atar grounds with irritation. It doesn't matter what our father wants. We're here now. There's no going home with our honor. Nothing about this is honorable, says Nefja. Arr says, I should never have come here with you. Atar says, then run, Arr. Run back to the farm like a coward. We'll deal with Sean ourselves. Does your father know you're here destroying his name? He does not, but he will be proud of us when Asl Fleur is finally our thane instead of you. You've gone too far, Otter. There is no honor in this. I must take Sean's side here. Fine, we'll kill you all. Then I'll be thane. Ha ha ha. All right, so... Uh, Sean, great, I'm right there. Nefja. So Nefja's got the spear. She can, she can, uh, uh, like, she could attack this guy directly from where she's standing. Uh, uh, little pipsqueak here, Kettle. He's got a bow, so he can, um, come in and fight that away. Uh, but mostly, I'm gonna want to do the standard, uh, plan of keeping my archers back and bringing my, uh, uh, regular people up front um, I don't have any special abilities I guess this guy did have the the uh, quick shot but he already used his action so we're gonna go ahead and do a ranging shot which will well you know what you only get to do one because um, I think we've already got a 95% chance to hit yeah so there's no point in doing a ranging shot and uh, I have a 95% chance as well you have a 71% chance but I think if you move there 71 Huh. Oh, and I don't really do that much damage either. That's kind of a surprise. Yeah, if I switch to a uh, sword, I still don't really do that much damage. But you know what? I'm going to go in 
with my sword for now anyways. So let's have this guy attack first. There we go. And now I'll charge in with my sword. And uh, Nefja should be able to finish him off. So I'm going to go ahead and move her here. Not that it really... I, I love that you can move and then attack. And like I could continue moving as long as I stay within these green hexes. And still get my attack off afterwards. So that's pretty great. And then like these guys can all move after they've attacked too. Which is also pretty great. So like I can have... Uh, I can have Asselfer go... Actually... Oh, so you can, a lot of your special abilities you can only use... Um, as like attack abilities but there's one that will allow you to move uh, where you avoid the attacks of opportunity yeah so she could have run past this guy and gotten behind him and we would have um, would have uh, flanked him but I'm going to go ahead and just attack him straight on there uh, oh that's right shit I, I should have um, I should just be incapacitating these guys instead of trying to kill them yeah Yeah, I don't know if I really want to keep these guys alive. Actually, you know what? Screw them. They attacked me out of nowhere for no reason. So I, I don't have any incentive to keep them alive. I'm going to um, have you take a step back. And then I'm going to... Oh, I thought he'd be able to run all the way over there and get adjacent to him, but I guess not. Um... Uh, Ah, shit, that's not who I wanted to move. But I'm going to move her here so she can't get shot by that guy with the arrow. I'll just move him right there is where I meant to move him. Great. All right. Yep. I get how cover works. So a little bit of damage there. And he's going to shoot. Yeah. All right. So this guy's harried. I'm not quite sure what that means. doesn't say... Uh, I mean, I know it like affects his uh, affects his uh, something or other. Yeah, harried, but it doesn't. I think that affects his resistances or something. I don't know. But let's just have him. So he could stun this guy, which would mean he wouldn't be able to move next turn. But I think we're going to be able to kill him. So I don't really think there's any need to stun him or anything. He'll get that attack, and she'll get the coup de gras and finish him off and uh, now all we've got left is this guy down here so I do need to get my archer is he going to be able to shoot him from over there he's got pretty good cover let's find out no he can't can't hit him from there so I'll go ahead and take cover um, but I should be able to get Sean to where he's going to be able to shoot him there's not really any cover around for this guy. Switch Sean back over to his bow. I think if he goes right here, he should have a good direct shot at him. If not, I can always move out of the way, but yeah, he's got a good straightforward shot. Now, Sean's going to get shot himself, but, you know. Or, is he? I think I can... S nope, I used up all my movement points getting down there. Alright, so let's bring her forward also. So she can get involved in the fight next turn. Ow. Oh. Jeez. Point blank. That's right. I'm going to give Sean the opportunity to do a point blank shot as well. That's all he's really got, right? Now this other stuff helps. Although I... Well, if this guy comes around, he'll be flanking him, right? Great, so now he's flanked. So I'm going to have him attack that away. And now I'll have Sean shoot him. I don't know if Sean gets a bonus for flanking. Both characters, a bonus to the damage they deal with the flanked enemy. Two characters, yep, yeah, alright. Oh, come on! How could I possibly miss? That doesn't make any sense. Alright, but that was a good hit right there. Victory, of course... 
victorious. It's, it's the easiest battle we're ever going to fight. Whenever you finish combat, you see the screen has a few, few pieces of information. Character was injured during combat, so like Kettle was injured. You need to be treated next time you make camp. Here you'll see any items uh, still equipped by your herdmen. Uh -huh. And uh, of course there's the regular items. Um, any uh, damage that they'll take. So weapons take damage and stuff and, and need repair over time. So Kettle is light tread hom tread hama? head trauma. Atar lies in the frozen earth in a small pool of his own blood. His blank eyes glaze at the sky. His lifeless body are scattered around the yard in front of your hall. It's fortunate you convinced Arr to break out, but he's now at his father's last hope to continue the lineage. Your guests look on solemnly in the snow in front of your feast hall. I didn't want this, but you saw what happened here. These men left me no choice. This is what happens to my enemies. Everyone would do well to remember that. Anyone who has a dispute with me can observe our customs and challenge me to a duel. But I will not be ambushed at my own feast. I'm going to take that option right there. Assel first steps forward. Doesn't look tired. I supported you here tonight because Atar and his brothers were out of line. It's not the way of us to fight in a drunken ball. Sean, son of Douglas, I challenge you to a duel for the position of Thane. Dun, dun, dun. Can you believe this, Big Jusinar? It's his right to issue such a challenge. His timing could have been better, though. Uh, well, yeah, why do you challenge me? Seed of a thane should never be passed from father to son, like a sword or a horse. If our, father, if our clan is to endure, we must ensure that we are ruled by the strongest and wisest. Well, I accept your challenge. We will meet on Holmgang Island at noon on the morrow. May the gods favor you. All right, so Asselfor is no longer following me. I don't really need to see those things. Uh, let's um, let's pick up some loot. We are going to have some, maybe some loot. A bunch of valuables and rations. So you can hold down the Alt key and it will show you all the stuff that you can interact with. Which is really handy. Because there's all sorts of stuff to interact with. Take all valuables. Unfinished runestone. It's not going to let me interact with that even though it shows that I can. Um... Maybe? No. But I can like go dig in that barrel. There we go. Uh, that barrel. Cool. Um, right. Well, uh, unfortunately, um, well, here, let's see what these guys have to say first, and then we'll end the episode. I can't believe it came to this. My sons are so stupid. Feels like the whole clan has turned against me. These tensions have simmered for a long time. He's a controversial thing. Those he angered fear that you won't bring the change you desire. It's not your fault. We have to deal with Erlinger after the duel tomorrow. He lost all his sons tonight. He might well be out for vengeance, but he has no way to get it anymore. Well, he does have that one son that I let go. Let me fight him. Um, I have to take this fight myself. You know that. You have the right to ask another to fight on your behalf. If others see that another warrior is willing to risk her life for you, it's worthy of respect if you beat her yourself. That's what being Thane is all about. Um, let's see what happens. Good to know you've got my back course sword is uh, yours if you need it your mother wraps you in an embrace hint of tears in her eyes well fought my child your father would be so proud the clan is at war with itself his father really such a poor thane there'll be another fight tomorrow i can't fight no, no, don't be such a baby douglas is always more a warrior than a leader but he was no worse than most this isn't really about him it's about ambitious and greed there'll be another fight tomorrow asshole for you do well to make some preparations. What can I do? It may not seem like it right now, but most of our clan remains loyal to us. They prefer you as Thane over Asselfer. Uh, go to Holda and the Bog and ask her for help. She's old and wise. Um, good idea. A drop of poison might do the trick. It should take the wind out of him, and he would still have to respect your victory, but you don't have to stop there. Sigrider may have an idea. She's good at setting traps for the creatures of the forest. She may know a trap large enough for a man. Other than that, Kveldelfer may be willing to get you some better equipment. Shouldn't go into those. Do into the duel with those old weapons Douglas gave you for training. All right, now we're going to call it the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed watching this first episode of this series, um, and um, I hope uh, you will come back and continue watching for episode number two. Uh, if you did enjoy, leave me a comment down in the comment section. Uh, I would love to hear what you have to think. And uh, I will probably go around and salvage a bunch of stuff uh, in between episodes. Um, but uh, I will not do any of the story interactions or anything. And then we'll do that uh, when we come back. And then there'll be the exciting battle with uh, What's-His-Face uh, on tomorrow's, on episode number two. So uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye!